Well, good morning. How are you this fine Friday? Well, I'm saying morning. I think we have just tipped over um, into afternoon here in the UK. So welcome. Welcome to this Google Digital Garage um, training session. Today, we're going to be talking about creating video for YouTube. We're actually going to go quite deep into the thinking that you have to do to be successful on YouTube. Um, and then by the end of the session, we'll be handing that back over to you. Um, what do you need to know? Well, first of all, how rude of me. My name's Christine and I shall be your uh, Google Digital Garage trainer for the day. Uh, Google Digital Garage is Google's free skills training program. I've been working on the program pretty much since it started all the way back in 2017, but I'm a marketeer by trade. I love working with small businesses to help them identify who they need to speak to and find the best ways to get in communication with those audiences. Um, so yeah, that's kind of who I am. Um, alongside me, we never do any of these alone. So alongside me today, I've got our moderator, Rashane. Now, Rashane is also one of our really experienced Google Digital Garage coaches. She is there to help you today. She's also there to try and keep me in line. But primarily, she's there to help you. So if you pop over to the chat right now, you will see that um, there's a lady called Rashane and next to her uh, name, she has a little blue spanner. That means she's the moderator. She's pretty much the one in charge. She will be helping you out. She'll be dropping you some links. She might ask you some questions, interact with her, say hi to her. To do that, you're going to need to be signed into a YouTube account. If you cannot see Rashane there, it's because you probably aren't signed in to your YouTube account. You need to sign into YouTube to be able to see the chat, interact, get your questions asked and answered. So if you want to pop up to the right hand side there, see the little icon, sign up, sign in, um, get that sorted dead quick and easy to do, absolutely free, of course. Get yourself signed up, get yourself signed in. And then when you've done that, pop in, say hi to Rashane, only polite to do so, and let us know what it is you're hoping to get out of today's session. Maybe you've tried some video already with YouTube and you want to see how well that's, you know, how that can be improved. Maybe you are trying to get up that nerve to take those first steps. Do let us know. The more we know about you, about your reasons, about your business, whatever it is that you came to us for today, the more we know about you, the more we will be able to tailor what we say today to help you out. Any trouble viewing the webinar at any point, best thing to do, old technical trick, turn it off and turn it back on again. Uh, try refreshing your page. That should bring you back um, to where we are. We are broadcasting live on YouTube today, which means we're going to keep our session today live till about lunchtime tomorrow, um, which means if you want to watch all the way through with me, the be that's the best thing to do, watch all the way through. That means you can it's not so much about hearing me. It's about having Rashane there to interact because she will only be there for that first hour. So you can ask your questions, you can get them answered, you can interact, you can give us your thoughts, give us your feelings. Once you've done that, as we go through, there might be something you go, aha, yeah, that's it. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to remember how to do. Jot down the time code because what you'll be able to do is go back to that section. Um, to come back and watch the video, just use the link that you clicked to get here in the first place you'll be able to see us out. I'm going to pause throughout the session um, to answer some questions from you. So if there's a question that Rashane sees and she thinks that will be great for the whole group to hear the answer to, she's going to send that over to me. And then as we pause, she'll be sending me as many of those as we can get time for. Timing will be an issue. There's a lot to talk about today. Um, so the earlier you get your questions in, the more likely we are to be able to get those answered for you as we go. So fire away with your questions as we go through. As I say, we'll pause about three times um, to take a look at those. And so you do know we're running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of our broader offering of courses. We are going around the country. We are offering all kinds of different courses and we do change the schedule. We add different um uh, items that are, you know, current to what people are wanting to know about. So if you want to check out our schedule of upcoming webinar training, and that's also where you'll see a hub almost for maybe if we're coming to your area, then check out the link. It takes you through to our website. It's in the description below and it'll take you off. But don't do that yet. Do that once we've finished, because today we're going to be looking at three areas. If you've joined any of our Google Digital Garage webinars before, you will know that this is kind of how we roll. So we're going to think about before we get into the, the doing, this isn't so much about a doing. This is a lot about thinking. So we'll think about 
you know, what, who you are, what you stand for, what you want to be known for. We're going to help you to go through the process of finding your niche. A lot of what we talk about today, you won't be able to fix it all by the end of this hour. Lots of things to go away and think about. Maybe some questions to ask. Every time you ask a question, the answer might lead to some more questions. That's okay. That's how we really learn. That's how we really grow. We'll then take a look at what makes engaging content and what kind of content you might want to be creating that's going to help you be as successful as possible on YouTube. And then we'll look at some of the ways that you can, once you've made your videos for your audience, you can start to get discovered. How are you going to um, get the word out there about you and your channel? And how are you going to know how well you're going? So we, we like to, for me, it comes back right back to the very simplest tenets of marketing, that if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. So how are you going to measure it? How are you going to track what you're doing? How are you going to know what to do more of? and what to do less of. And we'll have a little bit of fun of it along the way, okay? So, as I say, jump in, say hi to Rashane, have a think for me about the kinds of content you like to watch, because there are no right and wrong answers when it comes to YouTube. Um, there's just lots of things that people have tried, and some other things worked for them, other things didn't. Things that other some people tried and worked for them might not work for you. So it's really about being inquisitive, about learning a lot, about being bold and brave and trying something. Um, so with that in mind, as I say, feel free to let Rochelle know why you joined today, what kind of content you like, what kind of content you find engaging. And let's just start to get to know each other a little bit while I do that. Oh, wait a minute. That didn't work. Give us a second. I managed to lose my screen. Give us one second. Apologies for that. They did, shouldn't leave me in charge of buttons. So what we are going to do is we are going to remind you, um, if you don't already know, tell you if you do, about the free one-to-one -one mentoring that's available from Google. Because as well as helping you in this kind of broadcast situation with, um, you know, group training and coming out and meeting people out on the road in some of our face-to-face -face workshops, we also do offer um, to small businesses and charities that are based here in the UK, free one-to-one -one mentoring to help you make the best of the digital opportunities available. So if you want to sign up for a free one-to-one -one mentoring session from Google, you have to head to the link on the screen, which is g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Fill out the form with your details. Let us know what it is you want to know um and some times that you're available and then our lovely team will try and match you with a mentor um who will be able to help you out further okay that all said i don't think i really need to do a sales pitch for youtube if i'm honest i think most people understand you know um that youtube is the, it's the world's largest video sharing platform it's almost it's not just, it is a social media platform, but people don't really necessarily even consider it that because it's just where you go if you want to see some video content. It's the world's second largest search engine. So the largest is Google where we go and we look to find things. We look for answers on Google. But quite often the answers, we actually, if we're looking for answers, we want a video to show us what to do. So YouTube is the actual um, second largest search engine in the whole world. It's a platform that enables you to share your stories. It en enables you to put your voice out there and be discovered. Um, every day, people watch over a billion hours of video and we generate billions of views. Um, there are over 500 hours of video uploaded every minute. You couldn't watch all the videos that are currently uploaded in a day um, on YouTube in a whole lifetime. You know, it is huge. Over a third of the Internet visit YouTube every month. All a third of the people on the Internet head over to YouTube every month. What does all that mean to you? Well, if it's where your potential, where your audience potentially is hanging out, then it's probably a great place to give it a go to start being found, to get your messages out there. And it's really important because YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice. It's to show people the world. There are four um, 
essential values of freedom that are YouTube's uh, freedoms that they work to and stick by. It's the first is the freedom of expression. So on YouTube, people can express themselves. They can share their stories with the world. The idea is that everyone has something important to say. And YouTube believe that it's the people that should, um, you know, able to that people should be able to speak speak freely they should be able to share opinions foster open dialogues because creative freedom leads to new voices new formats new possibilities which kind of leads into the second freedom which is freedom of information because everyone should have easy open access to information and actually when you're saying that video is a hugely powerful force for education and it makes it so easy for us to consume, so easy for us to digest, a lot more accessible than say, you know, big thick books. Now I love a big thick book, but it's much easier to gain that same information if somebody tells me the story rather than making me read it myself, you know. So video is a powerful force for education and it helps us to document world events, both big and small. So whatever your passion, there's a space for you and your passion on YouTube and you can find people who are like you. On YouTube, um, there's a freedom of opportunity. Anyone can follow their passion. Anyone can create something. It's not held behind closed doors. The information should be out there, able to be discovered. Um, you can build a business. You can succeed on your own terms without, uh, as I say, without gatekeepers, without blockers in front of you. It's the people on YouTube, the community on YouTube that decides what's popular. And everybody has the freedom to belong. Everyone should be able to find communities. Everyone should be able to find that support, break down barriers, transcend borders, and come together to share interests, to share passions, to learn from each other, and, and to be able to actively participate in that community. Oh, which leads us into, okay, that's brilliant, Christine. How do I actually go about doing it? So in order to find a passion, you pretty much need to and share your passion. You kind of need to work out, well, what is it? What is your niche? What is your passion? What is it that you want to be talking about? The channels that aren't too successful on YouTube are ones that are too woolly. They might post one thing one day, not post anything for months, post something completely different, random thoughts. Here's a picture of my holiday. Oh, look, this is what I had for my tea. If you are going to take your channel away from being a bit of a part time projecty bit of fun and take it up a level of professionalism, of being a creator, then you need to start. Well, you don't have to, but my strong suggestion is that you start identifying the foundations of your channel. It's going to help you to create content that you enjoy. And if you can bring your enjoyment, your passion and fuel that fuels you, then you've got a chance of reaching like minded people. Okay, it's the passion that comes across when we think of great YouTube creators. So we're going to think about your what, your why, and your who. All right, so what's your channel about? Why are you creating content? And who are your audience? Okay, all those things together, what's your channel about is going to give you your guiding. Do I create this video or that video? Is it what my channel's about? Is it going to fit with what I need this channel to do. So my why might be for just for fun. It might be that you're doing this for work, to find clients, to share experiences, to be a, show a new hobby, to connect with people. So why are you creating that content? It's going to help you decide what to create. And really, really, really important as for me as a marketer, this is which where I spend my time obsessing is the who. Who are your audience? How do we reach them? What are they thinking about? You know, and if you know who the people are, you can actually guide your creative decisions and really think about, I'm not creating just for the internet, I'm creating for these people. We'll talk about all of these because if you create a full idea of what you're about, why you're creating content and who you're trying to speak to, it really helps you to focus in on what you're doing and make a coherent, make a successful um, potentially channel. So I've said it a few times, but we're thinking about passion, all right? You're what your channel is going to be about. You know, this whole idea that on YouTube you can engage with and grow and join and be part of a community no matter what you're passionate about. You can't fake passion, you know? It's, it's not something that 
Um, you can fake for too long anyway. Most people can't fake passion for too long. So a passion is a strong or extravagant fondness. I love that. An extravagant fondness, enthusiasm or desire for anything. Okay. So what are your values and beliefs? What are you passionate about? What's your story? These are sorts of things that you want to start thinking about in order to define what kind of content you want to start creating, what kind of people you want to be connecting with, what kind of messages you want to send out into the world. So if you're not sure what you want your channel to be about yet, think about back about, you know, what do you enjoy watching yourself? What excites you? What inspires you? What do you like to watch? What are the communities that you think you've got something to add to? You think you've got something that you can say? Because one of the absolute key magic sparkly dust um, items that you can have, that key ingredient for success, is actually being passionate about what you do. That passionate will transcend the camera and the screen and really allow you connect to connect with the audience if it's genuinely expressed. Okay, so first thing decide is what your channel is going to be about. And here we've got some ideas of um, people who've done just that. So we're thinking about a goal, all right? So what's your channel going to be about? So we've got Mama Cherry there. Mama Cherry um, wants to inspire people to love and cook soul food. And even the way Mama Cherry describes it as soul food. What a great, rich, warm description. I instantly feel the warmth coming just in the language that Mama Cherry's using to describe what she's up to. Um, so Mama Cherry has family, foster children and friends, and they share soul food recipes. They share cooking hacks, tips, tricks, all seasoned with love. So you can instantly get a real good, strong feeling for what that channel is going to be about. So when Mama Cherry wants to inspire people to love and cook soul food, that is the goal of that channel. OK, this is the why. Why are you creating content? What are you aiming for? Super Soul, completely different. Super Soul wanted to create a community of toy collectors. It's a YouTube channel aimed at adult nostalgic toy collectors. Um, they post daily content. They unbox things so you don't have to. OK, if you're into that, you know, if you have a, a passion, a fondness, and for all those nostalgic toys that you had with you when you were a kid, Super Soul is talking directly to you and helping you find other people who share that. You might, your family might not understand what it is and why you see the attraction in doing that. It doesn't matter because on YouTube, you can absolutely connect with people with the same sorts of passions, same feelings and thoughts as you. And this is one where I can understand the other two. But for me, Detailing World, you know, it's just so far outside my experience but detailing world have a passion for cleaning cars anybody who has a passion for cleaning anything i wish i had that tip hat to you um so detailing world actually started as a forum <clears throat> and they've used youtube to showcase videos to grow their community we'll talk a little bit more about detailing world in a little while because it's not just a passion for cleaning cars you know there's there's some lovely things going on deeper underneath but at its heart, what they want to do, their why, why are they creating content is to share that passion for car cleaning. OK, so I want you to have a think. Have a think about your um, channel. What will be your what and your why? OK, so pop some into the chat for me if you like, and I'll ask Roshane to pop those over to me. Um, so, you know, if you were a musician. So your what might be music and your why might be to teach people guitar or to your what might be music and your why might be to showcase your compositions to the world. You might want to find other people who share that passion. Your what might be uh, makeup, nails or um it might be car cleaning and you want to showcase your talents, find other people. You might have a business and you want to find people who think, I love that. I would love to be part of that. OK, so let's have a look who we've got. Brilliant. We've got Mia's Melody Lab who, oh, there we are. We've been talking about music and Mia's with us, who's a piano and singing teacher. Um, got a new age group of students, wants to share educational content 
and the work that she's passionate about. That's amazing. Um, so, Maya, we will come back to your little question in a little while. Um, so Mia's saying that she knows what she's passionate about. And then we're going to think about, well, how she goes about doing that later on. That's amazing. Okie dokie. So your what, what are you passionate about and why are you doing it? So there again for Mia, we've got a what of piano and singing. Um, and the why is to share that uh, educational content and connect with students and uh, others in a new way. Fantastic. Okie dokie. So give you a couple of minutes. You can you can, you can keep popping things like this in the chat as we go through. As things appear, uh, appear as thoughts to you, you just let Rashane know. Because I want to move on to the who, all right? Because deciding who your audience are is going to help you to focus all your activities on reaching them. Okay. And actually, if any of these uh, things I'm talking about need a little bit more um, explanation or you want to go a little bit deeper into some of these things. Some of our other webinars, which are strictly about things like digital marketing or social media marketing, actually go into some of these areas in a lot more depth. So really what we're talking about here is, is using YouTube as a marketing tool. So if you want to think about the wider issues beyond the creation of video and the platform of YouTube, join us for our digital marketing strategy um, webinar. Or if you want to look specifically at who audiences are, we do a session which is called Writing for Social Media. If you join us for Writing for Social Media and video being a social media thing, we actually really get really deep into identifying audiences. For now, all I'm going to say is that basically what you want to be thinking about is the recipient of your video. You literally, if you're going to hold them in your mind when you're creating a video, then everything you say, you'll be talking to that person, those people. And if you start thinking about it before you start creating your content, then you can actually create and tailor your communication. Okay, I want you to be sure that viewers are going to relate to your videos. So think about who they are. Where are they? How old are they? All these details. Are they male or female? Are they parents? Do they live at home? Do they have their own place? Are they renting? Are they passionate? What are they passionate about? What are their behaviours? What are their interests? What do they do for a living? What do they do when they're not at work? You know, music, movies, sport, what gets them excited? What gets them passionate? Because if you can connect on a you know, a fundamental human level with people, then you've absolutely got a chance of having a channel with a success. Also think about maybe the kinds of video that those people like to watch. You know, are they watching for information? Are they watching for entertainment? Are they watching for conversation and company and to be sociable? Are they watching for emotional support? You know, what is it that these people want and need and are engaging with? Because if you start to understand these things, then you can start working out, well, how are you going to fit? OK, useful tool to help you find your audience actually is called Find My Audience. And if you head over to thinkwithgoogle.com, this is a great resource for anything that you're doing. Think with Google, it's got lots of um, articles and thought pieces and, you know, just case studies and ideas. So head over to thinkwithgoogle.com and check out the tool that's Find My Audience. This will help you to identify the kinds of audiences that are out there. Um, I said we would think about those car cleaners. All right. So this is a, a really useful exercise. It's called either creating a pen portrait or a persona. It's kind of marketing 101. It's, it's about using all the facts, the bare, raw facts that you know about potentially people who might like what you've got to say and then bringing them to life kind of making a little person out of Play-Doh and injecting them with all these, infusing them with all these things that you know and thinking of them as a real person. So a, per a persona is a representation of your ideal subscriber. Now, within your persona, hopefully you'll be able to identify, you know, the traits that an individual might have that's going to make the connection between you. OK, it's not an actual person that you're describing. Sometimes people think, aha, I remember we did a piece of work when I worked for a charity and we were trying to reach volunteers and we looked at our data because if you've got data, it's a great way to do it. And amongst our volunteer base, there was a certain um, they were female. They were 
retired. They were in their 60s to 80s, 60s and 70s, um, still in good health. They were still, they had a lot to give. They had a lot of care. A lot of them had grandchildren. Maybe the grandchildren had moved away, what have you. But actually, we found in our database that a surprisingly high number, surprisingly, high, were called Gene. So Gene became our persona. And every time we were writing a communication, we were like, what would Gene think of this? Would this be right for Jean? How would she enjoy this? So we start to think about the persona as a real person. And that's exactly what um, this is detailing world have done. So they know Rowan. Now, Rowan's 27. OK, he works nine to five based in the UK and he's really enthusiastic about cars. He goes to car shows. He's interested in in, you know, taking pride in his car. Um he goes to a lot of online forums, he asks questions, he gets involved in answers. And when he goes to YouTube, he wants to learn, he wants educational content. He wants to improve his skills, improve his knowledge. OK. Rowan has two kids and why that's important is because he's always quite short of time. And what they do with that information is create this pen portrait, this persona, okay? And it allows you to always check in that you're creating content that's going to align with your passion, that's going to, you know, inspire your audience when you're thinking about hitting your goal. So here we are, Detail World. Remember, Detailing World, their what was a passion for looking after cars, okay? The why was sharing their knowledge and teaching others. And the who, the persona, was Rowan, that car enthusiastic who loves cars, but maybe doesn't have a lot of time on his hands. I'm using that the what, the why and the who. Detailing World came up with the idea of creating short videos that showcase tips on how to look after your car, you know, that give all those insider tips and tricks, the best things to use, the best techniques to try and created a community based around those things. So those three questions can really help you to identify your niche, give you an idea of the content that you want to create. Literally, when reading through about Rowan, you start, it, it almost starts to just magically appear. He's got two kids and short of time. OK, let's keep the videos short. He loves learning. OK, let's make educational content. We've got something great to say. This is who we're saying it to and how we're going to say it. So best thing to do is come up with a variety of ideas. And then in the next section, we're going to think of a few strategies to help you decide if it's the right direction for you and the right thing to do for your goal. Before we do, I'm just going to check in with Rashane and see how we're doing. OK, so. Um, back to Mia's question, um, saying basically that passion isn't enough. Yeah, absolutely, Mia. So Mia can, can get confused by all the different approaches one can use. And she knows what she's passionate about, but what's going to be the best approach. And I'm really going to have to dampen down expectations here a little while because um, there isn't a magic thing I can tell you that's going to work because different things work for different creators, for different audiences. However, let's look at, we're going to keep looking at, you know, the different things, the best way to do it. And, and I think you've, you know, how to crack the code. Actually, I think with you, Mia, that the, it sounds like, I don't know if you have tried some of these things. Our final section, when we start talking about measurement, that's what's going to um, really help us. Just want to give a shout out to Simon's joining us as well. Simon, um, oh, the what is conversations with art photographers about their creative journey. And why is Simon doing that? Because he wants to launch a business doing workshops. I would love to know, Simon, who? Who are those workshops for? Who are you trying to reach? Who are you trying to, um, you know, to, to, to find those motivated people who are going to book for workshops, I guess. So maybe there's a geography to them. Are they workshops that you have to come to a place? And that also starts to spark off all kinds of ideas. Do let Rochelle know and she's going to pass that on. Um, Okie dokie. So we're going to start thinking about creating the content. I have just seen um, 
just so you know, a question from Ossie. I um, hope I'm spelling, saying that right, Ossie. Uh, what are the necessary tools for creating videos? We're going to talk a little bit more about tools towards the end. This session isn't going to recommend a particular camera or a particular expensive solution. What this is really about is um, uh, the thinking that goes into it, because actually tools wise, a lot of the time I will cover this, but you can get started in most cases with what you've got. And then as you learn, you'll see what you want to add. OK, brilliant. All righty. So let's have a look at content and how to create engaging content. Um, so here's a question for you. And I started to trail this at the beginning. What do you think makes engaging content? No right and wrong answers here. Let Roche know. But what is it that you think makes content engaging? Is it what? Think about when you're watching video. You know, I think if you think about it, that for you to be a creator, for you to build an audience, for you to get them sharing, liking, subscribing, all of those things. That content's got to be engaging. You have got to persuade those people in your persona to do those things. So take a step back before we get too deep into what you're going to do. Think about what do you do? You know, you've got a great research subject right there. Um, what do you think makes engaging content? It's all about personal preference. You know, some people like it to uh, be really easy to find. You know, that it just seems to when I ask the question, it gives me answers. It might be that it's shareable, that, you know, it's something that you think is really interesting and that you think is going to be, you know, I think quite often when we're asking somebody to share, we're actually getting we're asking for a recommendation. So is what you're doing of good quality is what you're doing that's going to be shareable. The people are going to be proud to put their mind to put their um, name to rather than say, yeah, I think you should like this. I like this. You should like this. Give this a go. Um, so what makes you do that? What makes you subscribe? What makes you share? I remember when I was um, when I first started working on, on behalf of Google for the digital garage. I always used to say, very good. You can learn anything on YouTube. And it's true. But I wanted to put my money where my mouth was. So I went to look to learn to knit. And I looked at tons of different channels, asking the question, you know, how do I cast on? It's calling. I found that out. I was like, how do you start to learn to knit? And I found out that it was called cast on. And then I watched lots of different creators. And there was just something about this one lady who was explaining it in a way that made sense to my, because your fingers and your brain don't often when you're learning something like that. She just explained it in a way that made sense. So I liked it. I followed it. I subscribed it. I shared, you know. So think about what would make you do that. With that, it was really easy to understand. It just seemed to speak to me in my language. Um, there's lots of different things that different people enjoy about content. So no right and wrong answers. And start thinking, well, what might make your persona person engage and like and share? OK, that's what you've got to be thinking about. So one thing um, you might want to do is see what's popular already on YouTube, because there's different people like watching different things for different reasons. But to get some ideas there, um, you can see what's popular on YouTube by seeing what's trending. So look at the list of trending videos on your homepage. That helps you to see what's popular and start trying to analyse them and see what, you know, um, what's happening out there, what's going on, what people are trying, what seems to be weak working for the creators. So we're going to take a look at a few creative strategies to help you develop engaging video content. Um, and we're also going to start thinking about trying to tap into that loyal community. OK, so four steps. It's always a number of steps to take. Um, so for this, we're thinking about four steps. The first one is research and plan. So before you pick up your camera and start filming, um, you need to, no, you don't need to, you can literally run out into the street and start filming right now. My strong advice is not to do that because research is going to give you a strong foundation for engaging content and planning your content makes it easier to create. It saves you time in the long run. In fact, we quite often say that an hour spent planning can save you 10 hours of doing because you're going to do it much closer to right first time 
So you're going to make those mistakes on paper and go through the thought process before you commit to time, potentially money, um, and frustration of, of learning as the, those mistakes as you go along. Then we're going to think a little bit about equipment and having that equipment ready. It's easier than you think to get started. So there might be some video equipment you already have. Um, and then once you start working, there might be some things that are fairly low cost. We love a low cost solution. We don't want you spending tons of money until you know that it works for you, for your business. Um, it's Then we're going to think about how to create that content. It's, honestly, it's never going to be perfect before you start. Um, so get up, give it a go and then learn as you go and iterate. You know, um, you haven't failed until you stop trying. So just keep giving things a go. We really want you to take a trial and error attitude with this. Um, and then we'll take a little bit of, about organizing it and edit it. There's some simple things to consider once you're editing. Uh, actually, the best time to start thinking about the edit is right back when you're researching and planning. If you have an idea of how you want it to come together, then you can make sure that when you're researching and planning, you get the right content that you need, okay? But we're gonna start with our research, all right? So tons of resources out there help you with your research. Um, you know, it's about working out what's out there, what's popular, what you might, things you might want to try, and maybe coming up with a kind of, hierarchy, a list of things you might want to try, things you want to think about. So in terms of getting inspired, loads of places you can go um, to get inspired. First place is YouTube, looking at creators you admire, looking at content. Um, there's a great tool out there called Find My Audience, as we've said on Think With Google, but there are also lots of useful resources for helping you research. Um, there's lots of data available. So it doesn't just have to be a gut feeling. You can actually look at the data and see the kinds of videos. You know, you could look at kind of like how long people on average will watch a kind of video or, you know, what's really, what's trending, what's popular at the moment. Um, that's going to help you to stay a little bit ahead of, of maybe some of your competitors with that. You look at the data we're exploring, look at the trends that are being tracked, as well as some forward looking perspectives. So do head over to Think with Google. There's also um, Google Trends. So Google Trends is a brilliant uh, tool. It's one we talk about a lot in marketing. Basically, Google Trends since about, I think it was about 2004, um, somebody somewhere, lovable nerd, I like to think of them deciding, wouldn't it be interesting if we could see what people have been searching for? So all of the searches we make on Google are aggregated, anonymized, and we can just see the trends over time of what people are looking for, what people are interested in. Because if you think about it, most of us, we think of something, then we search for it. So you can see what the world is thinking about. Okay, well, how does that translate into what might be useful for you? Um, you might want to, you know, uh, we were saying about the unboxing of Super Soul. They might notice that search traffic around unboxing tends to spike at certain points in the year. I'm guessing probably November and December when people are thinking about, well, what's going to happen for Christmas? You know, so they want might want to in October start thinking about, well, I need to create content that's ready for November, that's going to show the unboxing of the latest toys. How am I going to do that? Okay. Knowing that, that channel gets ahead of the trend. Shooting and editing the content for the unboxing videos in plenty of time. Honestly, we're at what? We're coming up to the end of September. If you if Christmas is a big thing for you, you need to be thinking and planning and getting ready for it now. The worst kind of content is stuff that's reactive. If I'm honest, the best kind of content is things that you've planned, things that you are in control, that you know what's coming up. So really think about it. If you already have a channel, then you can utilize some of the YouTube tools. So YouTube search traffic allows you to see what searches came, brought people to you, which might give you insights on things like what titles work for you, the formats, the familiarity with your name. Then there's YouTube analytics. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it really helps you to monitor performance of your channel. So be thinking about what other people are up to. Look at what your competitors do. Look at what, if you have a competitor, um, somebody doing something similar to a similar audience, see what works for them. Is it the short videos, the longer videos? What kind of content, what kind of tags and words are they using to describe their content? 
You can emulate some of these. You can try some of them against your own thoughts and make a lovely uh, improvement on what you're doing. Um, and then there's listening to experts. So it's really worth tr uh, checking out the YouTube Creator Academy, where there are creators who freely talk about their passion, which is actually, in a lot of cases, creating video for YouTube. So go and listen and learn from the experts is my strong um, recommendation there, I guess. Then I want to think there's different kinds of content. I've mentioned it a little bit, you know, saying some people like shorter videos, some people like longer. So I want you to think about the right type of content for you. OK, so different kinds of, you know, you've got to think about the kind of resources you've got. It would be lovely to create a 90 minute documentary that has all kinds of wonderful original footage. But do you have the, um, the skills, the time, the money to do that? Quite often when we're starting out, that's not going to be the case. So think about the resources and the time that you have and what you can realistically achieve within your day to day, especially if you want this to be something with longevity. It's very important to work out how you're actually going to in three months, six months, a year's time, make sure that the big plans you put in, you've got time for and money for and that you don't lose your passion by getting involved in this way. So different kinds of content, different options. So first of all, one-off videos. This is a quick, impactful hit that gets your message across. Quite often with one-off videos, they might be really searchable to a specific question. Um, for me, it was, oh, how do I fix my washing machine? I'd broken one of the little, the little dial on my washing machine had broken. How do I fix my washing machine? That's all I want all, as the audience is a really simple, easy, really well researched, searchable because I said, how do I fix? And then I put the washing machine make and model in and somebody had directly answered my question. So I went straight to that content. What was interesting is, of course, that they also sold the parts I needed to do and they gave me a parts list and they showed me where I could buy them from it. So I watched the content on their YouTube channel because I found them so well in search. And then from that one off video, I went to their website and purchased the parts I need. And I fixed it myself by going back and rewatching that video about 14 times and stopping it at each stage and watching it through. OK, so a one off video gets your message across in a quick, impactful hit. And then we might have more regular video content. OK, a, a one off video can be, you know, whatever kind of length you want, I guess. We might think about short form videos. We might have short form. We think of anything under three minutes, really. So if you want to be a channel that has quite always on, has different content coming up, then short three minute hits feels like it might be quite manageable. Um, you can pretty much have, you know, short. And, that's what it is. Short and sweet and to the point. The great thing about short form video it tends to have a higher completion rate, a higher portion of people watching it to the end, which means if you know you're getting your message across in three minutes, then you can be really slick in how those shorter messages are conveyed. But maybe you've got something, an audience that's engaged enough or a content that deserves those longer form videos. So if you can deliver information in, in a way that makes people stick around, makes people watch, then it longer than three minutes, Things like podcasts, interviews, live streams, documentaries, maybe some of that content around um, the interviews with those photographers. You know, that's going to be longer form. But what you might do, actually, is, is kind of take, OK, well, I want to do longer form, but I've got to build up the trust that people to get them to come and see me. So I might do some short video tasters and then that leads into the longer form. Or I might break my longer form down into a series that people can either drop in and out of, maybe highly searchable. So maybe you've got a series on how to rebuild your washing machine. And I only wanted to come in on video number seven. It doesn't matter that I'd not seen number six. Didn't matter that I'd not seen number eight. I could just watch number seven and it was searchable and it was findable. And then I could go and watch others if I wanted to. So think about that series. With a series, you can take as long as you want to tell your story. And then you've got new decisions to make. It's, well, do I 
drop all my videos at once so I can bin be they can be binge watched? Do I do them in series where you know you get the first six episodes, then the next six episodes come six weeks later? Or do you drop them off one by one? So people have to, you know, like and subscribe and watch for the next series. Lots of different ways you can do them. Could be a regular post for your channel, or you could just release them as and when you create them. Who knows? So there's different formats of videos. My suggestion would be probably to start small, okay, and then build as you learn, build as you grow. If you say today, right, I am not going to publish this until it's perfect, then it could be a long, 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 long time in the getting there. Whereas if you say, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to test it, try it. I watched some um, lovely yoga content, uh, likes of yoga with Adrienne. You've got lots of Pilates content out there. And when I look at some of those creators, I can tell the very early videos they do. They've obviously just been filmed on equipment they had to hand, but the content was brilliant and it was engaging and they spoke in a, a manner that was really conveyed their passion. And now those videos are a lot more technical, they're a lot more polished. The messaging is still brilliant, but what they did was they didn't allow the fact that they weren't perfect to get in the way of getting out there. Okay, so. Uh, things we've kind of mentioned it, I guess, having a think about a release schedule. So when are you going to release these videos? Days of the week? How many videos can you make each day, each week, each month, each year? It's so all about those time and resources as well. Um, are you going to release on a set day of the week, a set day of the month? You're going to have different content on different days. You know, you might want to drum, jump in on various, um, you know, Fridays are more lighthearted day. We get our serious messages out on a Tuesday, whatever it might be. And are you going to re rotate that content and have different things going out at different times? Are you going to allow your audience to start to get to know what they're going to get from you and when? You know, Tech Review Tuesday, Fun Fact Friday, what is it that you might want to do? See if there's any of those things existing already that you could maybe jump into. Okay. If you have... If you make a lot of content and then want to release it to a schedule, then use the schedule publishing option. Um, that's going to allow you to sit down and do the work when it suits you and then schedule those releases. If I was using some, if I was doing a thing where I was a, a, a program where I was releasing at different times, I would want to make sure I had several weeks worth of videos stacked up in advance that were scheduled to release. That way, if anything happens, I go off on holiday, I fall ill, I forget, I get busy. I know that those videos are going out as and when I need them to. The other great thing is if you talk about that this is what you're going to do, it encourages subscribe. It encourages subscribers. You can say, to hear everything I've got new to say, hit subscribe, and my new videos are going to be released. You will be notified. OK, which is a great way to start really building that loyal audience. So when we tell any story, which is what we're doing with video, I want you to think about the beginning, the middle and the end. So we'll call those our hook, our middle where we're really engaging and doing the meat of the content. And at the end, we want a call to action. So you've decided the kind of content you want and how long it's going to be. Every single video should have something to grab people at the beginning then a story, and then some calls to action. Now, bear in mind, though, that we said not everybody watches all the way through to the end. So don't start at the beginning and tell the story and then finish with all the important parts because they may never get there. If you look at TV trailers, a TV trailer to get you to watch a new show somewhere quite often starts with the moment of highest impact, the most highest tension, quite often a hurt, you know, a big car explosion chase or a really, you know, actually starts with the juicy bits and then tells the story. What it will also be doing is it will be having calls to action throughout the video, letting people know to like, subscribe, to share, to buy, whatever it is you want them to do. Don't wait till the end to do all of those things. So think about how your structure is going to work. Remember, when we're scrolling through, we might just watch those first few seconds. How are you going to use that beginning to hook people in to want to know more? So don't feel you have to tell your stories chronologically. Um, actively ask people for likes, for comments, for subscribers in your video. If we just remind them to do it, oh, like and share, boop. Oh, there we are. It, it, not everybody will do it, but far more people will do it if you ask them that call to action. 
And quite a lot of people are, you know, they're, they're, they're popping those calls to action throughout the video as well. OK, try and focus on the benefits they're going to get from subscribing. You know, if you want more content like this, subscribe to my channel and we'll send it to you. Make it easy for them. OK, mention those calls to action as you go through. Don't wait for them to get to the end. So let's think about when you're writing for your video, OK? Um, creators do do write for video in different ways. They all have their own creative process. Sometimes it's a page of talking points. Sometimes it's, you know, a full on script. What you do depends on you. I would definitely, before you start recording, make sure you've got an idea of what it is you want to say. Um, really important with YouTube, we expect that this is a conversation almost between friends. So speak directly to the audience. This isn't necessarily a play. I mean, you might have a content that's a kind of a play, but most creators on YouTube are literally speaking directly to the person that they are trying to reach. And we're looking down the camera and we're talking to you as we do it because it's just me and you here. And we're just magically communicating through our computer screens. Um, you might want to write a, a, a full on script. If you do, then write it the way that you would say it. OK. And that's why I find bullet points easier, because I don't have to get it exactly right each time. Now, if you are going to do some complex edits and have different cameras doing different things, the best way I've ever seen it, you can get an app and attach it to a tablet and have it under the screen that scrolls your script that you put in it at the speed that, you know, you can alter the speed as to how quickly you want it. If you need the words to be exactly the same thing, I would use something like that. But putting scripts over to the side, you may want to make sure that people can speak directly to the camera. So if I were doing this with a script, I'm not, you might have guessed, I would have my script right there below my camera. So I can literally be just reading it as I go. OK, but it's really best. We are wanting to convey our passion, our flair, our voice. So make sure that you write in your own voice and read your script out loud before you start to even record. Make sure that it sounds. I would, you know, a great way to do it is to write your script in your voice, read it out. You'll find any kind of awkward, difficult parts to say. You could also just record it and then listen to it back and see how it feels. OK, um, right from your perspective. This isn't about being an amazing script writer. This is about conveying your passion. Check out storyboards. You know, once you're developing your, you know, if you've got a bit more uh, going on in your video, then you might want to think about, OK, a storyboard. You don't have to be an amazing artist. It's not like that aha video when the storyboard comes to life. Stick figures are going to be fine. Even like little post-it notes or something with what you want to happen when. Post-it notes are great, actually, because then you can move them around as you think about them. So sketch out a video plan. Remember that beginning, middle end. How are you going to have that hook? What are you going to show? How are you going to get people in? And what calls to action are you going to need? Then think about, OK, well, what's going to be in the shot? Do I need props? Do I need uh, people? Do I need a nice day to film it on? What is it? Where are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Um, there are digital tools that if you if you prefer, you know, storyboardthat.com helps you out with, with, with templates and things. Um, but for each shot being thinking, what are you actually trying to create? What are you trying to achieve when you film this shot? OK, what can be seen in the background? What music, what audio, what talkings they're going to be? OK. And that kind of brings you on to the end of the research and planning. So let's have a think about equipment, which is a question we've had already. You probably have most of the things you need to get started. OK, so first up, video camera. Most mobile phones have a very good video camera on them. I know my, from a stills point of view, my uh, mobile phone now is a far better camera than on my old uh, SLR camera. I had a digital SLR, brilliant camera, cost a fortune at the time, not half a patch on the quality of images we can get now just with our mobile phones. So you've probably got, a, definitely got a good enough phone um, to get started. Okay. Lighting. Good lighting is really important, but you don't have to make a start with fancy, fancy setups. Make a start with natural light. Harder as we go going into winter, I understand. But, you know, you can literally have a window behind behind your camera that lights your face as you talk. Um, video editing software. There are free options when it comes to that. Loads of creators just start with whatever's on the computer they use. You know, that might be iMovies, Windows Movie Makers. There are also free online 
um, editing apps. And you can also do some quick editing touch-ups in YouTube Studio. So don't think that you need to spend a fortune on features that you probably won't even be able to use. Then when you've done it and you've tried it, you're going to find what really starts to irk you. Um, to get your video better, a gimbal or a tripod is really, really good uh, that will hold the video, hold the camera steady. I mean, literally, I've done uh, videos where I've, I've balanced it on books, but a tripod makes that a lot more professional. Um, and then a handheld gimbal, if, if you're going out and about and you want that steady cam uh, effect. Lighting, you can get really affordable LED lights just on the internet online. Um, look for, you know, this is, we've got shown here a ring light. Lots of ways that you can do it. Some of them will combine a tripod and a ring light. So you can set the camera inside the ring light for the best possible lighting. And if you're talking, then you're going to need to be heard. And actually, one of the first things, lighting is probably the first thing, but then sound you know, a separate microphone, even if it's just the microphone. You know when you've got a little earphone and there's a microphone on that wire? Because think about it, your phone is designed to be spoken to here or here. If you're doing it from back here, you're going to start losing some um, some sound quality. So a microphone so people can hear you. But it, there again, it don't have to invest in great big fancy microphones. There's lots of low cost options out there. And as you get more experience, you might decide to purchase a more sophisticated editing program. It gives you some more options, makes it quicker or easier for you. It's probably not the first thing that you're going to want to make. I would get started. Don't let your kit hold you back. Start with what you've got and then see what else you go to from there. And when you're thinking about what's going on in your video, think about what can be seen. OK, what's going on around is what's going on around going to be distracting. Have you got logos? I want you to see my logo here today. But, you know, if I was, I wouldn't want you necessarily to see clashing T-shirt colours or, you know, I wouldn't want you to see if I was advertising somebody else's brand. So think about the space carefully. How are you going to move? What kind of um, sound is it going to have? If you were to shoot in a kitchen or a bathroom, you've got a lot of hard services that may make the sound quite difficult to hear. So think about avoiding those echoes. And then think about how you're going to move, your angles, your movements. I do move a lot when I talk, you know, and they're always on at me at that. Um, how does that work? What movements are you going to have between shots? Are you going to, if you're going to record it several times, if you've got two cameras, one there and one over there, then you can use the cameras to cut between different um, takes, which can help ease it out. And you might want to um, consider recording your audio separately, actually. Uh, there's free audio apps out there, things like Recfords or Recorder Plus, that allows you to record that audio separately on a separate device from the one you're filming with, which you can then add the video back in later. OK, so when you're editing five basic steps, you can import and organize your footage, add the visuals, add your sound effects, then make sure you check that sound. Make any colour correction so it's seamless across the place. And then you export and upload your video to YouTube. OK, tons of options there, lots of. Uh, but there they are your five basic steps. If you want to come back, we're quite close on time now. So if you do want to come back and have a look at those, do uh, jump back to just before the end of the video. OK, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to just jump quite quickly through our pause for questions and quite think about this. This is what's really um, final section is just to think about uh, success. How, what does it look like? How are you going to get discovered? OK, so we've spoken about a lot of this as we've been going through, because just as the edits should be started during the uh, the planning stage, show should your discoverability. Your what, why and who kind of tells you what people are looking for people you're trying to reach. So make sure you use those words that they're looking for in your tags, in your keywords, in your descriptions, in your titles. OK, you want to be searchable. How are you going to be found? All right. So in terms of keywords, join our session called um, Get Your Business Visible on Google. It shows you how search works and then apply that thinking to the keywords that you will use to describe your videos on YouTube. OK, do some research. Think about popular terms. Think about what's trending. All of those things we were doing in our research. Use that when you're shouting to the world about it. OK, 
And here are your ideas for your searchable titles. Here we go. Easy dessert recipe. That's something people are looking for. It's a mini lemon meringue pie. Those combination of the title and the description that are, if, if that's what I'm looking for, a recipe for a lemon meringue pie, that video is going to be able to be find, found. Kinds of content types, 10 steps, house twos. Um, those, how to is one of the most searched phrases on YouTube. How are you going to incorporate that into your own content if it's relevant? Keep your description short. And just because you can write really long descriptions, you're only actually going to see those first line and a half. So get the good stuff into that description because the descriptions was well. Once they find you, the description is going to help you know whether that's something to work. So front line load that We've talked about tags already. So under more options, when you're uploading, you can add different tags. So use some of the words in your title, but also other keywords that are going to help people. If they're looking for similar content, find you. Don't forget that you've got your keywords you've thought of, but use synonyms as well, because the more ways to describe what you are presenting, the better really. The more ones you use, the more likely it is somebody will find you. And it gives you credibility and authority as well. Think about you, how you would search on YouTube for something like you and go from there. Think about how searches iterate as well. And we've spoken loads about community and building of that. If you are on YouTube and you have other channels, then list those other, cha other socials rather on your YouTube channel. And on the flip side to that, promote and integrate your channel on your other things. Most video um, sharing platforms, so if you were choosing Instagram or Facebook, you know, they would want you to host native video on their platform. But that doesn't mean you can post the taster on your LinkedIn and then have the longer form video on your YouTube. Think about how that audience is going to find you. And don't forget to check your analytics. Once you have your channel up and running, there's tons of information. If you do not know how to interpret the data you get back from a business on the internet, then do jump to our um, uh, Getting Started with Analytics webinar, because that's really going to help you as well. Okie dokie. So I'm really, I know I've run out of time. I'm so sorry for that. So what I want you to do now is just have a think about for you, for your business, for whatever it is you're trying to achieve with YouTube, what are going to be your next steps? OK, if you work for a small business or for a charity and you're based here in the UK, don't forget you can sign up for one of those free one to one Google mentoring sessions at g.co forward slash UK mentoring. And other than that, I'm so sorry we have gone completely out of time today. I hope um, you have enjoyed the session, maybe learned something, given you some food for thought. Thanks for the questions. I know Rashane's been answering those I wasn't able to get to. Really hope it's been a useful brain opener for you on how to create video with YouTube. Um, if you're interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, then jump in uh, to the website, follow the link in the description below, and there's lots more things coming at you. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me for today. Rashane and I look forward to welcoming you again to another Google Digital Garage training session sometime soon. Have a great day and thank you.